Hang around the internet long enough and you're likely to hear the phrase Sturgeon's Law, a somewhat pessimistic axiom holding that, and I quote, 90% of everything is crap. It's a pretty good saying, one of my favorites, but a fewer and fewer people as time goes on seem to know the history behind it, namely that Sturgeon's Law was originally called Sturgeon's Revelation, and that the Sturgeon in question was noted science fiction author Theodore Sturgeon. Similarly obscured is the context in which he made his so-called revelation, namely as an off-the-cuff exasperated reply during a debate on the literary merits and or lack thereof of the science fiction genre wherein his opponent, arguing that sci-fi did not overall deserve to be regarded in terms of serious literature, demanded that Sturgeon at least concede that a great majority, at least 90%, of what was then being published under the heading of science fiction was, well, crap. To which Sturgeon is said to have now famously replied, well, 90% of everything is crap. Well, you're not wrong. Not well known now by name today, Sturgeon was one of the most prolific sci-fi writers of the immediate post-World War II era, and for a brief period in the 1950s, the most frequently anthologized writer in the English language. Viewed as a core foundational influence on more famous peers like Highland Ellison, Ray Bradbury, Samuel R. Delaney, among others, and perhaps most infamously, the inspiration for Kurt Vonnegut's recurring author character Kilgore Trout, today he's most often cited for his contributions as a writer for the original Star Trek series, where he's credited with first introducing Pon Far, the Vulcan hand sign, and the phrase live long and prosper, among others, across the original series and tie-in novelizations. They weren't all winners, though. Sturgeon also wrote the 1944 short story that served as the basis for today's feature, Killdozer, which is famous for being a movie about a possessed bulldozer called Killdozer and absolutely nothing else. Okay, sweetheart, destroy! I really cannot stress that point enough. Killdozer is an infamously bad movie, even in the context of other infamously bad made-for-television 1970s horror films, but whereas most of those tend to be bad in some oddly memorable way, overacted, budgeted way below ambition, stylistically bizarre, some unusual person is in the cast, Killdozer is a unique artifact simply as one of the most boring films one can possibly imagine having to watch, to the point that it's almost entertaining because it's not entertaining. Almost. What do you think about building a signal fire? Maybe an airplane or a fishing boat might... Sturgeon's original story, also adapted more faithfully to a Marvel Comics version in 1974, the same year as the movie, involved a group of construction workers building an airstrip on a small island who accidentally break the seal of a temple that's actually an ancient alien artifact releasing an energy-based entity that was part of a long-ago conflict that fought using powerful war machines. Said entity's function was to take over the enemy machines and turn them against their users, so it possesses the worker's bulldozer and sets about trying to kill them all because that's its programming. It's not really one of Sturgeon's best stories, but it is a pretty solid example of how to flesh out a basic idea like that into a full story. Complex background and origin for the big crazy thing happening, multiple characters to flesh out while they're figuring out what to do and not get killed, lots of details like what people call the bulldozer, and so on and so forth. The TV movie doesn't actually do any of those things. In this version, the setup is that a meteor of unknown origins crashes on the island. bulldozer bumps into it, gets taken over by something. <laughs> and becomes the killdozer. Everybody run away from the killdozer. Robert Yurick, Carl Betts, Neville Brand, and Clint Walker are the main actors. Killdozer itself is played by a Caterpillar D9, if anyone was wondering. And because bulldozers aren't really all that cinematic on their own, especially if you've only got movie of the week money to spend, nothing happening ensues.
Now, I'm not even kidding. This is most of Killdozer. Well, Chubb's got an idea. We ambush that dozer, run his truck into it, and kapow! Fire won't stop steel. It'll take out the electrical systems and the rubber. Hey, that's beautiful. I, I, I got a feeling we're going about this wrong. There's a good spot down the road about a half a mile. Let's get down there and set it up. Nothing happening. Listen. Listen, you guys. We got to do something. I mean, something's wrong. Mach machines just don't run by themselves. Nothing happening. Still, somehow, not much happening. This is about as close to action as this gets, so enjoy this part. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Electricity. Brilliant. I'm serious. Electrocution. We shoot juice into that big dozer. We got that generator. Looks damaged. Maybe, maybe not. We need a conductor of some kind. You're spinning your wheels, Kelly. No, I'm not. It'll work. It's over. A lot of people in the audience look pissed. I didn't even start out wanting to do that joke, guys. I scheduled this because, hey, I've never done Killdozer on this before, but it's been a while since I've watched it, and yeah, there's there's just nothing going on here, is there? It, it's kind of amazing. No attempt to make the bulldozer scary or invested with some kind of personality. No interesting death scenes, given that it's a TV movie. Inertly directed, the characters aren't memorable. I severely doubt that anyone would even remember the title that much, except that an alt-rock band named themselves Killdozer at some point. You pretty much just end up staring at this, like, why did they make this? Who was it for? And why did they think even they wanted to see it? So, in conclusion, as this year's Schlocktober comes to an unusual close, for the first time on All Hallows' Eve itself, please keep in mind, however your Halloween actually goes, it could be worse, you could be watching Killdozer. Do you believe that thing? What's it waiting for? What's its hurry? <laughs>